Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, you're going to learn how to cut out stamped images. The stamped images we'll be cutting out are from Catch You Later. It's a new stamp set by Stampin' Up. I say new, meaning it came out in January as part of our mini catalog. Simply adorable. I'm gonna make these little guys wobble on a card with the little wobble spring. We're gonna put this little monkeys on the jungle background. This one on the rainbow of happiness background. You're gonna to get to see lots of card examples that I created using this set. Now, before I begin, I wanted to just say a couple things. You learned how to make shaker cards in my tutorial. And I told you I was gonna come back. I said, I need to put some critters on my shaker cards. Now, I didn't put critters on the ones that have the confetti or the uh, sequins inside. But there were some shaker cards I made that were not shakers. They didn't have the window in the, and I don't mean shaker cards. I shouldn't say shaker cards. There were some cards I created, actually, let me go back, that didn't have the, the, the acetate window and the sequins. And I told you the ones that had sort of plain striped backgrounds, I said, I'm going to put some critters in them. So I've put the critters in them. Oh, I can't wait to show you the critters. Anyway, that's at the end of my video when I show you my examples. So I, I jazzed up some of those cards we made in the other Scan and Cut tutorial, so it is related. Okay, another thing I wanted to do, because I have a lot of beginners, and I have a lot of beginners in my Scan and Cut user group, where I just announced that I was going live. I see some of you already jumped on before I even got here. Because after I say I'm going live, I have to get my tripod, my microphone, everything, you know, set up. Well, anyway, the little bonus here is that before I start cutting stamped images, I need to align my machine. Okay, so aligning your machine is important so that you get the right amount of white space around the critters, around your stamped images. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to do that first. And while I'm doing that, I can, you know, I'll come say hi to you all as well. Let me just, and I also wanted to find my little pencil because I'm going to need it for one of the tri tips and tricks later. Okay, so I'm all set up. What does alignment mean exactly? It means that in relation to the blade, it needs to know on the mat where everything is. So even though you have these registration marks and you scan something in, you don't always get an even amount of space around it. So let's, you have to put a sheet of 12 by 12. Well, it doesn't have to be 12 by 12, but at least has to be 12 inches across. You need a sheet of white cardstock on your mat when you do this. Okay, I'm not gonna load it yet because if I load it, it's just gonna spit it right out. I need to show you the settings. So what, what we're doing now, this is before we do anything else, is we need to get in there for our scan and cut. By the way, I'm using STX 125. This works even better, better on the CM models. I love the alignment feature on the CM models. Much more because you can control it and this one, you just have to go with whatever the default settings are in the machine, which is, anyway, I'll get to that in a minute. So you're going to, you're going to turn on your machine, like here, that's just, you, you're big, you're a complete beginner. You just turn on your machine and you go, okay, now what do I do? You see all these buttons, right? You don't do anything. Don't do any scanning yet. We're going to do this later. Don't do that yet. We're going to go into the little wrench and we're going to go into the settings. That's the settings. Sometimes it's out here. Like if you're on a CM model, that little button's out see, out here. Um, go scroll down a little bit. Go down, down, down. These are little panels or little panels of settings. Down a little. You're gonna go down to where you see scanning, cutting, position, adjustment. Okay, click on that. Scanning, cutting, position, adjustment. So even if I had loaded the mat, it would have spit it out at this point. So we're gonna say okay. It says keep your hands away because it really would have spit it out. Now, it's going to tell you, it tells you exactly what to do. It says, install the blade holder and mat with a sheet of white paper attached. Okay, it has to be white. It has to be 12 inches across. It doesn't have to be 12 inches down because it really is just doing something on the top little part here. So I'm going to show you which white cardstock I'm using in a minute. And now it says, shift the scanner to position lever one. Okay, let's show you that. This doesn't matter on CM models. You don't have a position lever one. I got tape all over my machine. My machine is literally being held together by... Painter's tape. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so there's this is lever one. See that? So lever one, not lever two, because lever two is for like when you're lifting the scanning plate when you're doing drawing and things like that. Thicker materials. Just put it down to lever one. It was already on lever one, but it's just reminding you. 
All right, yada, 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 what's it saying? Okay, install the white paper, which we did. I'm using, by the way, I keep getting asked about this. This is a STX mat. If you don't see this little diamond in it, you know, at the bottom, and one arrow going one direction on the top. Here, this is, this isn't, here, I'm going to move this up. I got to, I got to address this right away. I'm getting, you wouldn't believe how many emails I'm getting. Oh, I got the wrong mat. Uh, why won't my mat load? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, why won't your mat load? You're using the wrong mat. Okay. So I'm going to just tell you that right now. This is an STX machine. You see this? That's the arrow going to the bottom. That's the bottom of an STX mat. It works on all the different STX models, right? STX. I'm using STX 125. This, however, look at this mat. This is a CM mat. Watch this. CM. Look at that. Arrows in both directions. I'm going to put them side by side. Here, let me just raise my tripod. I like to add extra tips and tricks because I get asked so many questions, I can't answer them all. I just cannot possibly. That's why I have a Scan and Cut user group now. You guys are amazing in that group. I see a lot of you here because you guys answer questions and help me because I can't keep up with it all. All right, let's do this. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make the tripod go higher so I can show you this. All right. See this? This is a, this is the STX mat we're using. This is the CM mat. Look at that. The, this is the CM mat. First of all, it's a different size. Okay, I'm putting well. It's a shorter, a shorter mat. Secondly, it has an arrow going in both directions. The CM mat. The STX mats do not have arrows going in both directions. See that? At the bottom of an STX mat, you have a diamond. So the next time you you say your mat won't load, which watch it not load right now. It could be because your machine's temperamental and, and a pain in the butt, okay, because that happens to me all the time. But it could be that you're using the wrong mat. And most likely you're using the wrong mat, although my, my, my machine is a pain in the butt as well. All right, so let's now, it's saying to, uh, now it's telling me to load the mat and it's going to do this scanning, cutting, position adjustment. So I'm trying to help it load a little bit. Sometimes mine doesn't load right away. See, it's not grabbing, it's not grabbing. And that's, that just happens to me, like, kind of quite often. There the rollers are going. Okay, it finally went. All right, is it, did it work? Okay, good. Now it's telling me, and now I'm going to go ahead and lower my tripod. I'm going to lower my tripod and um, you may see me, the sound change a little bit because I need to, I need to plug in. <clears throat> okay, hope you can still hear me. I need to use the internal microphone on my camera because I need to charge. Let's see. Charging. Hopefully that is working. I didn't hear a little, I didn't hear that little charge. Maybe when you're going live, you can't hear that little charge uh, lightning bolt sound. Anyway, so what it's telling me now, it's saying put the, put the blade in and hit start. Okay, so it says we did that. We, it says put the, not the blade, put the mat in and hit start. All right, so we've covered that. So now we're doing the alignment. All right, I'm seeing questions. Let me say hi. Oh, wow, lots of you guys are here today. Okay, thank you, Janet. Janet said, even though I'm not a beginner, she's, well, I'm, not, I'm just putting the, I'm paraphrasing the first part. She's like, I'm going to watch anyway, because I told my team, I told my Scan and Cut user group, this is a beginning tutorial. And so she's like, I'm going to watch it anyway, right? It doesn't matter. Anyone can watch any tutorial. And there's always some tip, new tip and trick. And there's always like some kind of project I'm showing. Like my projects are always new. All the things I create are new. All the ways to use the new Stampin' Up! materials are new, like using sometimes new markers. So yes, there's always new tips and tricks, but I just wanted to tell you that it is something I've covered before, how to cut stamped images. That's why I say it was a beginner tutorial. Oh, so anyway, let's see. We have Janet. We have Vela. Hello, Vela. You got here before I got here. Guys, you guys got over here quickly. Hello, Tina. Hello, Susie from Illinois. You cut 25 of these? Awesome, Tina. You've already cut them. You, did you cut the monkeys or did you cut the, or did you cut some of each, the fish, the monkeys, and the, and the little chicks? Okay, here we, it's, 
I'm, I'm at Deborah from New South Wales, Australia, and I'll say hi to the rest of you later because I need to get on with the tutorial. Now, what it's done, just so you know what it's done, is it's done in alignment. It's done, it, it put the little hash marks here. Okay, it put little crosshairs there. That's all it did. And now it's telling me, now it's asking me, does the red circle of align with the center cut? Well, it pretty much doesn't matter what you say here, okay? I, I just like to keep it real. It doesn't matter if we say yes or no, it doesn't really matter. Because if you say no, all it's gonna do is the same thing all over again. Okay, if you say no, it's gonna say load a white sheet of paper, blah, 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 blah. Put the white sheet of paper in, it's gonna align. If you say yes, then it just saves the settings. I would, let's just go ahead and say yes. In other words, we don't really know if it worked until we say yes, because we don't know if it worked well until we cut another set of stamped images. We're gonna say okay. And then if we said no, it would have said, go ahead, we're gonna do this again. So let me go ahead and take this out. I'm gonna hit the home button. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and hit the home button. Go back to the home. So wh what it did is it put, it cut little marks in your white paper. It cut little crosshairs, I'm gonna call them. And then it, and then it scanned them in. That's why you need a piece of 12 by 12. Well, or at least 12 inches across. So I'm just using, I, this is what I use my old, we, we now sell basic white. 12 by 12, but I use my, my whisper white, meaning my older white paper, like it's, it's the one we don't have anymore, but now we have basic white 12 by 12. I use that for a lining, or I use paper I get from like the cheapy paper, like cheap white paper, like uh, the white paper from, you know, when I say cheapy, like the stuff you, it's not good for stamping onto, like from Joanne and, and Michaels and all that good stuff. All right, so what, with that said, we're done with the alignment, hopefully. And now we'll go back to it later. But what's really nice if you have an SDX model, I mean, a non-SDX, a, let me turn the machine like this, a CM model, is at that point, if you would have said no, or even yet, actually, you didn't have to say yes or no. At, when you got to the alignment stage, you were actually able to go in there and, and like move it. So here's your crosshair. You can actually move the arrows on your machine and adjust it better, like more accurately. So I really like the CM models better for that reason. But at the same time, they're not better for many other reasons. And those reasons, you know, they don't have auto blade and et cetera, et cetera. What I'm doing is putting a little silicone mat under here when I stamp. I'm gonna take the stamps out. We're gonna do catch you later with the little chicky poos. We'll do the chicks. And then we'll do the monkeys. We'll do, we'll do all three. Okay, I'm gonna lay it down. My, it's a cling stamp. I'm gonna, oops. Got to find a better, here, find, then I'm going to use this one. Okay, I'm just using a stamping block. Stamping block D is the best stamping block. If you're going to get one of our great stamping blocks, start with D. D is really good because D has, D has really like a good versi versatile size. All right, so I've been, I've been just using this as my scrap paper, so let me just make sure I get a good, okay, I do. I have a good image. I'm just using something else as a scrap paper. All right, so I'll stamp two of these. I'm holding it there for a few seconds. Why am I doing it upside down? Well, because this stamp pad is, like this stamp is bigger than the stamp pad and it's just easier, better coverage when you do it upside down. Okay, so we're gonna do a couple chicks. And, I, and the reason I'm doing a couple of chicks is to show you a trick with the tri chicks. Let's pull this little guy off and we'll do, see if the monkeys will fit on here. Yes, the monkeys will also fit on, num on D. Stamping block D. Tap, 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 tap. Memento black ink. Why memento black? It's great for when you're doing blending later with the alcohol markers, the, the blends don't run. But if you're gonna be doing watercoloring on these cute little critters, then for watercoloring, you would use Stazon ink. Anyway, last time I checked, we don't even have Memento ink right now, but I'm sure many of my crafty friends already have it. Okay, I'm, I'm using the silicone mat under there to keep, right? 
to get a good stamped image. So if you're not getting good stamped images, you're either not inking up, you're not using the right ink, you're not using the right paper, okay? Right paper meaning this is basic white cardstock. Good ink absorption, okay? Or maybe you're not using the right ink, or maybe you're not using the right stamping blocks. There could be many reasons. Okay, now we're gonna get the little kitty. This kitty is hilarious. Like, I think I'm gonna use this kitty with the mouse. I'm gonna get rid of the goldfish, I'm gonna do some masking. And I have this mischievous mice stamp set. And in, in that stamp set, it there's a mouse and he's like hiding in the cheese, right? So I want him to sit above the cheese, looking down at the cheese on the mouse and he's gonna go, I'll catch you later. Like I'm gonna catch the mouse later. That's what I'm gonna do with that stamp. But right now I'm just trying to cut it out the way it is because this is still cute. When he's staring at the goldfish, I'll catch you later. I think that's cute as well. I just like to give it a, give the image a little stamp on the paper first. All right, so putting it back on this little silicone mat. Good, good, good. I always like to do two of each just in case one messes up. All right, good. I think I'm all done my stamping. Memento black. All righty. We are golden. Move all these away. And I've already started using my sentiments. These are the sen sentiments. Uh, just wanted to show you something. I, I like to teach tips and tricks because I told you this was a big, you know, newbie tutorial. So say you have, um, let's see, say you have your just perfect, right? And you wanted to mount this sentiment. These are our cling stamps. This is stamping up cling stamps. You take off the sticker. You know it's the side, you know, you're taking it off. It's, it's cling sticker, right? You're just perfect, and then you take off, you're just perfect. I didn't use this one in my cards, but I'm going to use it later, so I'll just show you how to do that. And you go like this, and then you're just going to turn it over, right? And you're going to stick it on there. So this is when you first get your stamps and you want to set them up. This is how you do it. Push it on there. Boom. You're just perfect, right? And then you can mount it, and then it's ready to go. Like, literally ready to go for you to stamp. Here. Okay, and you always stamp it a couple times to get that, to get the, it all inked up before you do it on your paper. Okay. Once you do it on your paper, it comes out better. Okay, so that's that's just like how to mount a stamp. All right, so we could cut that out in a rectangle or something, possibly later. Just depends. All right, so that's. Then when I'm done, when I'm done with them, I keep this piece of rubber. I don't know why I keep this piece of rubber. Because I'm a hoarder. I don't know. I keep this sticker sheet even when the stickers are all gone. But what I do with all my stamps is stick them on the side, the inside of the case. Okay? So some people keep the rubber and they stick their stamps back inside there like this. And I don't know why they do that. But that's what they decide to do. They go like this. And they go and they put it in and I'm like, well, okay. But for whatever reason, they do it like this. They store their stamps back inside here. Maybe so they know if they're missing. Maybe maybe that's why they do it, so they know if they're missing. And that's fine. And do whatever you want. You know, store them however you want. However, I don't do that, but I still save the piece of rubber because once in a while, I go to sell my used stamps. There's some, like, websites to sell your used stamps. And then people say, do you have the piece of rubber? And I'm like, uh, yeah. I don't know why you're asking me that, but yes, I have the piece of rubber. Okay. Now let's um, let's get the machine back. Let's take this little stuff, and this is my website, by the way. It's inside the description of the video, but you can get that's where you can purchase the this one. Catch you later stamp set, and and then the paper I'm showing you is free with the fifty. The uh, Rainbow of Happiness paper is free when you spend fifty dollars at my store. Oh. I had to get a drink. Then that goes on until February 28th at the end of celebration. All right, moving this all out of the way now. Bringing the machine back. So I'll show you the, the couple tricks before we cut this. And I'm just going to put this back over here. So now you have these cute little images are going to cut the way you want them right away. So they're already good. They're already going to cut out pretty nicely. But there's a couple things we need to do to help them along. And, and there's a couple of things extra you want to do if you want to get some, some ground. All right, so the first thing is you have open gaps here in this, in this vine for the monkeys. 
So you need to go in and close your gaps with a pencil. And you can erase the pencil later. Don't erase it with the pink part of the pencil. Just use like a white eraser. So close in the gaps. And then that'll make this whole thing one solid image with no gaps. That means it'll go around and it'll cut it. You can't really cut the inside of this out very easily. You'd have to use another uh, cutting inside and outside of images trick, but that doesn't work. I've already tried it, and I can show you the result of that. This is very hard to get this piece out because of this little gap here. It never went in there. It doesn't think it's an open spot, but sometimes I got it to, to go all the way in there and get the monkey. See, like, it, it this gap was big enough, and it went in there and got all this part out of the inside of the monkeys, which is awesome, but this gap is not big enough. I could have taped it up and made it bigger gap. But anyway, I didn't bother. Anyway, what you want to do, that's your tip and trick for this. Just use a pencil. Really nothing for this because you don't really care about these dots here. I don't think you do. But if you care about the dots, I'll just go ahead and put a line there. If you want this to all get scanned in as one image, then go ahead and connect that line there. I'm not going to connect it to this one. But you can connect it. But here's what I wanted to show you with the birds. Say you want to get some little ground that you can color. Like you want to make some grass or some little ground, like, you know, little brown ground, right? Then go like this and connect all these little dots around the little feet of the birds here, or the chick. Okay, and go like this. Make yourself a little, make yourself a little ground here, a little piece of ground. And then that way you can color that later. It'll all cut out as one. And if not, it'll, it'll cut out just fine without that. But if you want that little piece, I taught that tip and trick when we were cutting out meerkats. Because the meerkats were like, you know, they had this really cool desert sand under them. There was a there was a stamp sack with the meerkats. Anyway, and so I taught that tip and trick. All right, so let me now go up to here. So we've put that, we've loaded it onto the mat. The reason I put it where it is is because I never get good results cutting on the top left. Or I get good results on the top right. I'm also going to only scan the top half of this mat. That's an option we have. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in here. Okay, we're going to go to, so we turn on our machine, we go to pattern and scan, and we're going to go to scan. Okay, total beginner tutorial. We got pattern and scan. These are your two options. Pattern is when you want to cut out internal patterns, right, from your machine. Really cool shapes and patterns. Scan, let's go back, is when you want to scan something in and do what the scan and cut is meant to do, which is scan and cut. So scan is the option when we want to cut out stamped images. You have two options, direct cut and scan to cut data. This is when you want to save something and manipulate it, re, you know, resize, duplicate, et cetera, et cetera. We don't want to do that with stamped images because there's no reason to. You want to cut them directly out the way they are. So we're going to use direct cut. So we're going to use the first option, direct cut. You can buy the stamps, Lara, right in my, the link inside the description of my web. Here. Papered Chef, here's the, here's the link. But go to the description in the video, okay? And you'll find my website. Every time it's in the description of the video, you know, it, my website is always there. Okay, let's see. Select, okay, this is asking where do you want to store the temporary data? Okay, this is, you want to store it on the machine and not in Canvas Workspace because we don't need to use Canvas Workspace. Or, I mean, in the internet, in the cloud. We just, we're just going to store it to the machine. Scan area, 12 by 6 mode. So, yes. We could scan the whole mat in, but all the images are on the top half, so we're going to scan at the 12 by 6 because it saves us time. And we don't want to use color recognition mode ever, 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 hardly ever, 99% of the time. You don't want to use color recognition mode because there's no need for it because the black and white has good recognition. There's, there's well-defined lines. You don't need color. And I always recommend not to color until later anyway because what if these don't cut out correctly? So we'll see if they're going to cut out correctly. I can kind of tell before I get too far into it if I need to go, wait. <clears throat> so what it's doing now is it, I hit, I hit, um, oh, it scanned them in. Sorry, that's what it was doing. Scanned them in. I'm going to click OK. And now I want to show you a couple more tips and tricks. OK, I click OK, and you see there's a big hot mess. So let's zoom in at the big hot mess and show you what's going on. The big hot mess over here is the part of the mat that's not covered by my white paper has a lot of, like, dirt on it. And so that's all the little lines being scanned in. Okay, so, and I'll zoom in some more so you can see that. So we need to get rid of those. Otherwise, I'll be here all day. That's thousands of little tiny lines cutting out. I'd be here all day trying to cut them. So the first way to get rid of a hot mess, and we don't need the sentiment either. These all got 
all these letters got scanned individually. We just, the first way to get rid of this is just to, to make a selection with your little stylus by getting rid of all those extra lines just by, you notice why I didn't stamp too close to the side of the paper is because I can then get rid of these extra lines easy because I stamped a little bit away from the edge of my margin of the paper. So that's the first way to get rid of objects you don't want is make a selection using your stylus. The second way to get rid of objects you don't want is to go to ignore object size. We know that these objects are going to be, you know, more than an inch tall or so. So, you know, you be safe to ignore any little objects that got selected randomly around the mat by going up to like, you know, three quarters of an inch and ignoring objects. If you go up too high and you ignore objects that are too big, you're going to ignore the very thing you're trying to cut out. So you don't want to get up too high with the ignore object size. But let's just say that's another way of getting rid of things you don't want. And the third way to get rid of things you don't want after you say OK is by clicking on Edit. And then you can go around and see, using the selection toggle, this is called the selection toggle, you can see, did I have any more than six items selected? Are there random things up there? And if you, if you see random things that you don't want, then you can trash them using the trash can if you see any more things. So that's a third way of getting rid of things you don't want. All right, we're ready to cut, except that we want to create a cute little white margin around our stamped images. To, I think it's cute. I think it's much cuter. I'm really into critters and cute things. And I like to put an outline distance. Did you see how I did that? I'm going to say 04. I'm going to click an outline distance of 0 0.04 so that I put a margin around the stamped images. It also helps get rid of extra little things and smooth some lines around the edges. It's right here. It looks like the little offset button. Okay, so I'm putting that, and it's in every model of Scan and Cut. You can put an a outline around your stamped image when you cut it. I guess you guys can hear my neighbor's dog barking in the background. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Let's, we're gonna go, we're gonna select cut. We're gonna select cut. And we're gonna go ahead and cut it. And, and now I can say hi to you while it's all cutting. And I'm also gonna let us watch it to see if our alignment worked. Because if it didn't, I need to probably stop it and go, wait a minute. So now it's cutting, and I'll talk about blade depth if you're using a CM model as well. All right, so I see lots of questions coming in, and I see you guys helping each other answer, which is awesome. All right, we left off talk with my friend from New South Wales, Deborah. Okay, cool. And now we're going to say hi to Dolly from Florida, and Melissa from Texas, and Susie, who's a beginner, who's here, learning how to cut stamped images. Awesome. Gloria. Oh, Melissa just got the stamp set yesterday. Well, you know what? I've got it five or six times now, okay? It's crazy how many times I keep buying this. And every time I ask people, Melissa, I keep saying, Do you, would, you know, would you like this as a prize? Or calming camellia? Or hello? Like, and I say prize because I have like a host code prize drawing when people use the host code on my website. Anyway, and I also have VIP challenges and drawings. And I have team challenges and drawings in my paper chef team and then everyone keeps picking it and I'm like oh darn I wanted to use it and then they keep picking it as a prize so the, then last time I ordered like two or three so I think I'm on my fifth or sixth one and I finally got to play with my own set I was like please don't pick it as a prize because then I can't play with it sometimes when my team members pick a prize I'm like can I play with it before I send it to you anyway good evening from to Pamela from Colorado and Sheila Tina from Maryland, Anne from Tennessee, who I was just chatting with. Awesome. She's one, another one of the paper chefs. And Veronica got you a new one. All right. So you're watching the Olympics. Pamela's watching the Olympics and multitasking. I haven't really watched much of the Olympics. Okay, it looks like, so I could see that, you know, it was doing okay. And it looked like it was doing okay. And so we didn't have to stop it. So anyway, what we're going to do is peel this off. It, it cut the stamped images. And all it said up here is finish cutting, which I'll show you that in a minute. So we're going to peel this off. It cut the stamped images. Okay, we're peel this off. We're going to get our little spatula. We're going to get under there and get them off. Let me just put another piece of paper there so you can see them. Very good. Good alignment. Cute critters. Right? Cute critters. Cute little monkeys. 
I'll show you how to erase that, and I'll talk about blade depth as well before we get to move the machine out of the way. Oh, so cute. I'll show you my result of trying to do scan to cut data on these. Here's where I got the little ground to cut out. See how the ground cuts out if you wanted to cut the ground out? And then here's, if you don't do that, how you can just get the little feet to cut out, and that's fine as well. So it all they all came out nice. Very happy results with all of these. So a couple more things before we move on, and then I'm, I'm going to go back to the top. So here we have, this is the Scan and Cut SDX. You're using, we're using AutoBlade. AutoBlade means it doesn't have to determine, it doesn't need to know the blade depth, okay? So it knows what blade depth because it's AutoBlade. It just, it just figures it out. But if you're using a model that does have, like, has little numbers on it, like a CM model, then you're going to have to set the blade depth yourself, and you want to set a blade depth of four when cutting this regular basic white cardstock. And I say regular basic white, meaning that's the pack that comes in 40 per sheet, 40 sheets in a pack. Okay, so you would use a blade depth of four for that. Stamping up cardstock. Not the thick cardstock, just the regular one. All right, it says finish cutting okay, and we're going to go ahead and unload the mat. Okay, a couple more things before we move on. I'm going to put the mat over here. Okay, if you wanted to then put a little outline, a um, like a, a layer. Let me find my goat set for a minute because I don't want to do this again on this tutorial because I didn't want layers. And my tutorials are always set. When I give you tutorials, it's things I'm actually doing. And if I'm not putting layers on these little critters, then I'm not going to show you that right now. But I do want to show you the tip. So I think I need to... Let me see if I zoomed out. Let me move, let me move things away. Okay, here, I'll move it back. So there's this, there's this stamp set called Way to Go, and I cut out lots of stamped images from it and save them, so my bucket of crafty goodness here. If you want to make little layers, like extra layers to put behind your critters, here, like this. Like this is an extra layer of In Good Taste Designer Series paper to go behind the goat. And then here's one with three layers, a cardstock, Designer Series paper, and a third layer. So this one has three layers. And, you know, a lot of these have just two layers. Oh, here's here's a little dancing. This is for the dancing goat. Okay, so if you want to cut out stamped images and put a layer behind it, like that, I'm going to show you how to do that. But I'm not actually going to make a layer for this stamp set. I just want to show you how to do that. So you need to do another. You need to leave everything on the mat the way it is. Okay, so everything's on the mat the way it is. You're not, you unloaded the mat. You, I mean, you didn't need to unload the mat, actually. I just happened to unload it. But you don't need to unload it. You're going to leave all the stamped images the way they are, and you're going to go back one step here, and you're going to go to this offset, and you're going to turn it, you're going to go up to 0 .08. 0 .08 will get you another layer. You're going to just go ahead and stick new paper on there, stick another piece of paper on your mat, cut it out. Then you're going to be all done, and you're going to say okay, and you're going to go back, and you're going to want a third layer. A third layer, you're going to go back and do point tw point 0.12. But if you get too many layers, they're going to start merging together. This is these, these stamped images are close together. So that's how to get offsets. All right. And when you're all done, you just wipe it all out. You know, you don't need to save anything. But I just want to show you that I did try to do the scan to cut data. And I tried to do the inside of the monkey. And it was a hot mess. So I didn't, I ended up giving up on the inside of the monkey. See, I couldn't get it. I couldn't get the inside of the... When I say inside, I couldn't get this little piece to do it. But if I send it back to the machine, I probably could have done some work on the machine to get that to cut out. But I didn't get it to cut out on the machine very easily. That's why I didn't show you that part. All right, so we already talked about auto blade, and you would set the blade up with the CM, and that's pretty much it. Everything I showed you can be done on a CM model. All right, let's do a little bit of... Let's have a little bit of fun here these guys and I've already by the way I'd like to there there is a way to to cut rectangles out of this I'll do another I'll do another tutorial I'm just thinking just because of time and I want to color a little bit I was thinking I'll do another tutorial where I show you about the cutting stamped sentiments but these little sentiments were not cut with the scan and cut these little guys these were cut with a, a bunch of I cut them all at once with them. There's this die called the messages die. This one's just cut in a rectangle. And then you can get stitching. Now, you, it's not that the scan and cut won't do stitching. It's just that metal dies are better for stitching. They just, they just are. I'm keeping it real. The scan and cut's better for some things. Stitching is not one of them, okay? 
Stitching is not, the scan and cut is not better for stitching. I'm trying to get this at, a, at the angle so you can see it better. And it's a little better. Stitching works better on a metal die end, but you can get little dashes on, you know, on a regular, little dashes on the scan and cut, but it's not true stitching. I'm grabbing the blends. Me just, and grabbing, let's see what else I need. I need the eraser. All right, the eraser. So don't use the white, don't use, either use a little Pentel eraser, like a little, let's see. Okay, like a white eraser like this, Pentel eraser, or my little electric eraser, given to me by my crafty friend. So you're gonna um, go in there and get this, these little parts out. And you might be saying, well, why do I even need to erase them? Aren't I going to color anyway? Well, you always need to get back to the way the artist intended. The graphic artists design these. If they wanted the branch to be open, like erase the marks you made so that the branch is open, right? So, I mean, that's why I erase them. I just like to go back to the way the stamped image was intended, and that's why I erase the little marks. But although, if it doesn't really matter because you're going to color them in anyway. Let's see. Did we do anything with this one? We did a little bit of... See, I can erase it to go back to having those little gaps there. But notice how this one, because I used the pencil trick, I got that extra little thing over there on both sides, the way the stamp was. But on this one, see that? I didn't put, I didn't use the pencil trick. And see how they came out differently. This one I used the pencil trick because you need to enclose the stamped image. And then on this, where's the chicky poo? The chicks. Okay, chicks, you're going to see. You want to erase this. I got the little piece of the ground that I'm going to color in. Well, I don't have to color it all in, but I'm saying that you can color in. And where's the other chick? I've already erased. I don't think I did any pencil marks on that one. All right. Mary's saying she missed a lot. No, Mary, you really didn't miss a lot. You know, well, you can go back, though. Watch the beginning. That's what's great about YouTube is you can watch the beginning. All right. So... Let's see. Oh, wow. Jenkintown, PA. You know, Jan, that is my old stomping grounds. Well, actually, my sister's old stomping. Well, I mean, I lived right near, right near next to that. Okay. Awesome. All right. So after Pamela was watching the Olympics, where you've got to say hi from Lar Lauren from Houston, Nola. Hello, Nola. And Terry and Frida and Beverly. Yes, CM mats don't work on, Veronica's saying, don't work on SDX machines. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm taking some So Saffron, do a little bit of coloring while I'm saying hi to you. And uh, let's see. Thank you, Pat, for the comment. What I'm doing is I'm taking the dark So Saffron, and then we have a light So Saffron. Blends come in different, different colors packets of like two so you get like a light and a dark when you get the blends you get two together I always take the dark one and either take the thin side it can be the thin or the six thick side it doesn't matter and you're going to go around the the outer edges with the darker one and I'm just going to also do the wings a little bit I mean do the little head I don't know what these little feather things are called on the birds the little hairdo the little hairdo and we'll go like that with the wings so I'm just getting some well-defined edges here but because they are alcohol markers I can blend but now I'm going to take the lighter one and I'm just going to do circular motions I know my whole table is going to start shaking circular motions to blend the outside color with the inside color you'll see the result of that when I show you the ones that dried better And then it, also you can just, if you don't want to do circular motions, you can just sort of go choo, 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 like get little lines, kind of blend them in. Nice. And then what I did is I took my natural tones blends. I took one of the sort of pinkish natural tones here. It's the lightest natural tones blends and it's, I took the lightest one. And unfortunately, our natural tone blends have already gone. They're already out of inventory, unfortunately. I, I warned you, I did three or four videos, maybe four, maybe four videos on YouTube, some on Facebook, some on Instagram. I've been saying it for 
a couple weeks now. I said, hey, these are in low inventory. And then still I get a message today. Hey, the blends are gone. What What's going on? And I'm like, um, I've been saying they're going to be gone. But anyway, they're coming back April in April. I think April 4th is the estimated time. I'm just putting little pink feet. Only because I don't have an orange one near me. So I'm making little pink feet. Hey, you can make pink feet on the chicks. It's okay. I'll even make the ground pink a little bit because... That's what I have with me is the natural tones, blends, and just grab a couple colors. That was, well, I don't want to go with 500. We can go 800. That was 1,000. I'll go with the, I'll go with the 1,000 and the 800 together. There we go. All right, so I don't need to keep coloring the chicks. You get the idea. So that was So Saffron, natural tones, a little bit of natural tones. Okay, let's do the kitty and the fishy. We'll do that. All right. For that, we need some pool party. We need pool party for the water, right? Pool party is the best color. If you're going to get any blends, you pool party. And then I just like to use my new natural tones. I love having these because it makes it so easy for me to do animals. I'm going to use the three and the 500. We're going to make a dark kitty. Dark kitty. The lighter the numbers, the darker. The darker it is, believe it or not. It's like you would think the numbers would go higher, they'd be darker. But the higher the number, like the 100 is the darkest of the natural tone blends. And then it's like, okay, I have to get used to that when blending because, you know, you need to kind of always put your darker one on the outside. And then I'm going to do the 500. So I like to do the odd numbers. I like to blend odd and even numbers together because these are brownish. The, the natural tone blends didn't really come in pairs that you blend. I just sort of do my own thing with them. I got a pack of 10 of them. All righty. So that is a little bit of circular motion there. Hello kitty, hello kitty. We're gonna get the little fish to be pink with the, with the with the thousand blends. Natural tone blend number thousand. I just labeled it myself with my label maker, and we're gonna make the water dark on the bottom using the dark pool party. And then we're gonna also use the dark pool party for his little eyeball. And you can do this little eye. If you want to do, you don't need to do the eyeballs in color. They look fine white, but I just like to, I don't know, sometimes I like to put, I know that we don't really have color in that part of our eyes, but you know what? I just think it looks cute. And now I'm using the light pool party. I have, I'm using the thin side here. This is the thin side, meaning just to get in there. So that's the light pool party. So that's how you get your water. Okay, so far here's what we've done. Let me zoom in there a little bit. And tilt this down so you can see what we've done so far. All right, I'll do the monkeys now. We'll monkey around a little. All right, making sure that's still in focus. So where's our so saffron? Chicky poos. Here, we'll put those over here. And now we're going to color some monkeys. So this, I think the video is blurred on your end. I don't, is it because I just zoomed in? Let's see. Is the video blurred now? Here, I'm going to zoom out a little. Maybe I was too close. Okay, Patty, let me know if you could see that better. I zoomed back out. What I'm going to do for this is I'm going to use a Stampin' Right marker across for the vine because I found that this one was just easier because it the vine is so small that it was hard to color the vine with the blends because the blends are kind of big. So sometimes I like to use my Stampin' Right markers of which I have the whole collection, and then some, because I have retired ones too, and I have all the ink colors since since I started. And they've, they've all pretty much lasted. I've only needed to replace a couple markers. They last a very long time, because I usually just color them, for, use them to color fine details. So I'm using the marker to color the vine in just jade. Why? Because the paper I used had a coordinating color of just jade. Just Jade is going to be, I'm using the Bloom Where You're Planted, DSP, Bloom Where You're Planted. 
Okay, we're gonna keep those brown ones out for the monkeys here, and we're gonna do the monkey uh, seat number. Okay, the darker one is the higher color. Wait, no, the lower number. See, I have. To, it's always kind of the darker number is the lower number. Okay, it's it's very confusing for me to 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 have a darker number. A, a lower number being the darker. That's just very confusing for me. But it is what it is. So we're just going to do this. It happened to me earlier. So you're going to see that I actually made the faces. I did it the opposite earlier because I, I mixed up the numbers. So what I'm doing now is I'm just doing the little dark parts with the of the monkey. With the lower number. <laughs> and then we're just going to... Oops, I forgot the tail. I'm not going to do both monkeys. I think you get the idea. Because I color them both the same way. So I'm doing the darker part for like the legs, the face, the little feet. And then what I did is I took the lighter color in the little in the body part like that, circular motions. The lighter color being the higher number. Oh, here it is, number 500. And I put the lighter in the face. But you'll see I did it opposite a little bit earlier. And then we'll do some ears. We'll do the ears light. So when you color your stamped images, they just come alive. And then when you think about it, you can use like all the colors that are coordinate with whatever project. So just the natural tones are going to coordinate with anything. They'll be in our next annual catalog. Do not fear. You're going to be able to get these later if you haven't got them yet. But you, when you color... Like just taking this, just taking this little vine and making it just jade, is going to really match it to my next project, right? Because it's just jade, is going to coordinate with the project I show. All right. Okay, so Patty's saying it was better when I zoomed in. All right. Well, you know what, Patty? It's just your computer buffering. Sometimes it's going to be more focused, and sometimes not. Like I don't know what I can really can't. My camera's not on. I don't know. All right, next thing I did is I took like my blending brushes a little bit and I was trying to get rid of the harsh white areas. So I, to get rid of the harsh white areas, I blended a little bit. And the, so I took some, some gray granite and I'm gonna open up the gray granite. I, I better zoom back out only because I can't see what I'm doing if I don't zoom back out. I'm too close for myself to see. All right, then I'm gonna just kind of See which one I was using here. I think I used this one for the gray granite. So what I did is I took the gray granite and I'm just gonna put a little bit of ink on my on my ink pad there. Yeah, Diana, you could you can re-ink the stamp and rate markers with the re-inkers. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm just getting a little bit of ink on there. And what I did is to get rid of the harsh white parts of my monkey area, I just went in there. And I blended in these little parts. And that's because I put it on a background. And what happened is I just thought it was like too white before I glued it down. And then I just said, I'm going to get, especially this little white area in the middle. And what I did is I blended so that the, the little, it wouldn't be so white. I didn't want to do this side because I'm not done coloring yet. But you get the idea. So you can do that to any of your stamped images if you want to get those white areas to not be so white. And you can use, like, sometimes... It, Smoky slate's good. I'm using gray granite, just kind of any neutral color, crumb cake, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, that's about all for that. And then the last thing I'll show you is is like how I would ink up the sentiments. So, like if I'm gonna put sentiments on something, this is my so saffron brush. There's already a little bit of ink on there, but I would use the so I'm using the so saffron. Dip it in there or dip it in dip it in your here. We can do it. We can do it real quick. I'll just go ahead and do it. So you put a little bit of ink on your stamping block, ink it up a little, get in there, and then ink your sentiments, right? These sentiments, again, I cut out, I die cut with some other dyes, like the, the dyes were called messages dyes, and then this one I think is from Hippo and Friends, but I don't sit there and die cut right now. Like, I just have a whole bucket of things that I've been die cutting. So I don't, I don't even know, like, sometimes I don't even know where, remember where the die cuts come from because I have such a big bucket of them. But look at how much better it looks when you sort of ink around the edges. All right, now I'm ready to clear this a little bit and show you some projects. Now that you know the entire process, because it's not, it's like, 
I don't want to just show you how to cut stamped images. I want to show you how to layer them, color them, right? And et cetera. Okay, Janice from Michigan. I it, I would tell you to get the CM model. Honestly, I like that better, but you, you can't really find them anymore. So just get the SDX 125. It's the industry standard. And I'll link it for you in your question. But I'm saying it's like, it's not really a matter of which one I think is the better machine. Sometimes the better machines are gone and then brother keeps making new machines. And the new machines aren't necessarily better than the old machines, but they have way more features. So I have to kind of go with the ones that have more features and tell you to get the ones with more features, right? So that's what I'm going to recommend. All right, let me finish saying hi as I'm showing you these cards. Okay, here's my projects. Here's my pile of projects to show you. So last week we did shaker cards and i i taught you how to use the rainbow of happiness uh no it's called sunshine and rainbows designer series paper and i taught you how to make oval windows and shaker cards and it was a fun video and i made a couple with you and then i told you i would come back and show you how i could add critters to these and i want to show you like what i've what i've done to those projects while i'm showing you these ones okay so Let's see. Midway. Good day from Sydney, Australia. I love it. Mounted stamps on a sheet. Okay, you put your mounted stamps on the sheet so you know if one's missing. Right. She saves the rubber too. So, Mary, it's for, yeah, I think it's a good idea to know if one's missing. Back to that, what I was doing. Hi, Katie. And Frida and Diane and Anna and Mary from Kansas City. Oh, my goodness. We have so many more who've come in. I'm not going to get a chance to say hi to all of you. Veronica from North Carolina. All right. We'll just do the best I can. Melody, Lauren, Pamela. Yes, Pamela, I can order for Lauren too because I am a demonstrator, but I always like when people order. I try to teach you to fish, so I'd like you to order on the website yourselves because I just, if I have to place orders for everybody, I'm not teaching you how to do it yourself, and you can get way more out of it, more rewards and stuff when you do it yourself. Hi, Pat. I'm glad you like the monkeys. Hi, Frida. Anyway, so here are the cards I made before. These are the shaker cards. We taught you how to cut out the oval window and how to cut out a layer. All right. We did the shaker cards. We did them together. Okay, let me show you the rest. Of I just want to kind of go with that theme first, and then I'll show you the monkeys. Okay, here's, here's what I did with the Rainbow of Happiness Designer Series paper. I put these little guys on a wobble spring, the little chicky poos there. And you saw how I inked the edges and how I colored them. Okay. I, I used an embossing folder. Something about, oh, I forget what it's called. Painted texture or something. I forget which embossing folder that was. But I embossed a piece of granny apple green. I did it on a pool party background. Okay. So that's, that's how you can do what, you know, that's what you do with your little chicks after you make them. So what I show you at the end of each of my videos is like, why did we do all this? Why did we do all that? It's so cute as it is, right? But look how cute it is when you put it on a wobble and you put it on a card. Some layer. This little piece is a piece, you know, rainbow, sunshine and rainbows designer series paper, which is free when you spend $50 at my Stampin' Up store. All right. Here's what I was talking about. Take, take the cards we made last week. I had made a bunch of them up. I said, hey, this is too plain on the inside. Just those little stripes on the inside. It was a cute card as it was. But how much cuter is it when you put the little chick with all the rainbows, right? So now I have a beautiful spring card. And he's, and he's a happy card. You make me happy. And I could still put the, you, I'll always be here for you on the inside if I want. It's plain on the inside. If I want to use that sentiment, I can. That's what that, you can do that extra little stamping on the inside. But it's plain on the inside. Or you can even put that up here. But it doesn't really have the same font. So I'd probably put that on the inside. Okay. Okay. Again, Sunshine and Rainbows Designer Series Paper, as was this. I used the Cloud Punch. This time I'm using the messages die and the hippo and friends dies and the kitty and the little fishy are on the wobble. And you can even do some Wink Estella if you want to make them glitter. You can paint over them with Wink Estella brush and make them shimmer and glimmer. Okay, and then I use some opal rounds. I did an odd number of opal rounds, like five or some gems. I did some opal rounds and some gems. Okay. All right. Here's the rainbow of happiness. I told you I'd put some critters in there. I put my way to goat on there. Way to go. You're the goat. You're the greatest of all time. Some of that new paper called, we still have, this one's available now. This is a 
the paper I've been showing on my YouTube channel a lot lately. This paper. Oh, how did I read? All together, all together collection. It's the All Together Collection. So when you see little black parts, I was using this paper with my Sunshine and Rainbows paper. And that's a goat that has the layer that I taught you how to layer today. So he has a layer going on. Okay. Here is another goat. Okay. Yeah, the Wobble Springs are linked, Mary. In the description of this video, I linked the Wobble Springs. Just please, you guys, learn to use the description of the video for my store, my links. I'm going to go back and edit it some more. Because you guys, that's right there. All you got to do is click on it. All right, so, and it takes you directly there. This little thing is a piece of, a, there's another layer behind this goat. And this one's not on a wobble spring. You don't even need a wobble spring to make them look cute. And another one we made last time on our scan and cut tutorial. So um, this is all related because we did all this with the scan and cut. None of these cards would be possible without the scan and cut. These I thought were fun the way they were because they already had rainbows on the inside. So I didn't think I needed to add a critter to it. But I wanted to show you an idea I had. Is my mermaid I thought would look cute here. Kind of like a, a, a little girl card. So I'm saving this in case. Because I might need a quick birthday card for a little girl. And I thought that would look cute on there. And um, you are so amazing. I stamped this in Misty Moonlight, right? Misty Moonlight. So that would be cute. But putting the amazing on the inside. So this is just another idea of what to do with those oval windows from last time. This is the Pirates and Mermaids designer. Or Pirates and Mermaids stamp set. Right, like that. And this one, maybe not, because she'll cover up too much of the rainbow. But these cards are the way they are. Anyway, last two, last two projects, and then I'm done for the day, is our, our let's say R, and th these monkeys. The monkeys from the Catch You Later can be put on background. And this is the reason I used, for this vine, the reason I used the Just Jade was because Just Jade is one of the coordinating colors in this designer series paper called Bloom Where You're Planted. It's in our annual catalog. It's called Bloom Where You're Planted and it and it has like this and it has this brick in it and it has these leaves that look like a jungle already. And that's why I thought the monkeys would look good in the jungle and in with all that. And I used the natural tone blends for the monkeys. And I used that paper. Oh, this is in good taste designer series paper. And these hearts are from one of my paper pumpkin kits because you got to save all your little bling and things from your old paper pumpkin kits because you can use them, you know, very easily on other projects. So that's how I did that one. And then I use, I, you can just cut your banners yourself. I use that gray granite to ink around the edges of these and these. See all these edges here. And I use the gray granite to make these not so white in the background. So it wouldn't be so stark. So those are just ideas and always feel free to, it's called case, you know, copy and share everything. You can always copy and share the projects I show you and just, you know, it's good to give credit or links to where you got it, but just it's, I want you to learn how to do this stuff and then have instant ideas on what to do with the stamp sets that you get from my store. All right. Thank you all for watching. Gloria, I appreciate you. Yeah. No, Pamela, you are in the UK. You can use stamping with Ian. Dot blogspot.com. I'm, I'm not sure if you, that's exactly his website, but Stamping with Ian, look him up. He's he's my brother scan and cut buddy from, he helps moderate my brother scan and cut group, Paper Chef scan and cut user group. And he does a lot of work with me online and he has a scan and cut too. So he's also a demonstrator in the UK. So I guess if you're around Europe, you can use demonstrators in the UK. I don't think you have to be in the UK, but anywhere in Europe, I think you can use the same demonstrators. Like in the U.S., we can only use U.S. demonstrators. Like Canada can only use Canada demonstrators. But I appreciate your support either way. Hello, Melissa. Let's see. Monkey cards. I'm just making sure I didn't... Okay, Anna. Thank you, Anna. Otters. Otters, yes. Stinking cute otters are good to put on. I didn't put any otters on my rainbow cards because I wanted to put them more on water cards. Okay. Nola says make your own wobbles. That would work too. But I just don't bother because they're so cheap and I don't want to bother because these already have stickers on them. The wobbles look like, see if I can't find a wobble for you. 
Okay, I'm getting so many questions about the wobbles. I better show you a wobble because before I end here, I'm getting so many questions. We'll put wobbles on here for you. See? I mean, why would I bother making them when they're like a quarter? Right? And they're already wobble and they're already sticking on both sides. And, I, you know, sometimes you got to say time is money. But if you want to make them because you're making like a ton of stuff, of course save money. So I'm going to take off the little peel. I'm going to peel it off. Okay? And I'm going to go like this. I'm going to turn it over. My stamped image. And I'm going to stick on the hard side. There's a hard side and a soft side. And you're going to stick it on like that. And then you're going to take off this side. Well, I don't have a card to put it on right now. You're going to peel off this side. And you're gonna stick this, and then you're gonna then you're gonna center it on the card, like get it the right way. Right when you peel it off, you're gonna push it down on your card and then stick it on there. And then it'll start wobbling. So very easy to use. And just makes I mean I just I get these in, in packs of a hundred. So I always I always put them on things. Thank you, Bev. Thank you, Rose. All right, well. I appreciate, well, I've, I think I've had like a really good turnout today. I think I'm going to keep on announcing that I'm going live when I go in my Scan and Cut user group because you guys are here and showing up in full force. And I'll link to that group if you want to, if you're interested in joining that Facebook group. That's where you can get questions answered a lot quicker than you can from me because there's a whole fleet of helpers will help answer your questions about the Scan and Cut because I can't possibly do it all anymore. There's just too many messages per day. I just can't physically as one person do it anymore. That's, like, really helpful. The group is really helpful. All right, Jane, Brother Machine. Okay, Janice, I'll answer you later. Jane, thank you. Patty, thank you. All right, catch you off later. This is the Paper Chef. That's all for now. Oops, my chicks are quails. Okay, so these are quails, not chicks. I mean, there's a chick, but it's a quail chick and not... A chicken. <laughs> I know. I was wondering because of the top of the hat. Okay. So these are quails. We'll start calling them quails. Thank you, Nola, for that one. Bye, everybody.